The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to our world of mystery and the macabre. How much do you know about rats? About as much as I did, I suppose, before I heard of the strange crimes at the Meriwether Research Institute. It all began with certain experiments on a strain of rat known in scientific circles as Rattus novicicus, and ended with death. Squiddy. What? The rat. The rat. Get out of that cage. And? On the one. Well, the wing told the truth about Atticus being able to slip the latch on the cage. If he did, what happens to us? Gray. Don't think about it, Doris. Don't think about it. <laughs> Mystery drama, The Rat, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Luther and stars Michael Wager. Still there? Good. I admire your nerve. All right, then. Come along with me to the laboratory of Dr. Grayson Carter behavioral scientist at the Meriwether Research Institute. As you see, in that cage there, which covers one wall of the laboratory, are about 150 rats. Big, too, aren't they? That handsome, dark-haired man in the white coat is Dr. Carter. And as you can hear, he's dictating a report. Report to Dr. Christopher Morton from Dr. Grayson Carter concerning experiment number 17 on Rattus Norvegicus. As you know, my entire theory is based on my conviction that of the 2,000 rat species in the world, the Muridae rat, especially the brown rat of Norway, Rattus Norvegicus, is the most intelligent. Although they originated in Asia Minor, they have spread throughout the world. As you know, my... Oh. Sorry, Gray, you're dictating. Oh, it's okay, darling. Come on in. I can't stay long. I'm going to the hospital to bring Wayne home. Oh, so soon. Quick recovery, I'd say. It wasn't really a bad attack this time. Oh? Doris, he couldn't move. He was absolutely paralyzed with pain. When his back goes out like that and the muscle spasms, he is helpless, yes, and sometimes it takes weeks in traction for him to recover, but sometimes only a few days. Doris... You are going to go through this. Tell him I want a divorce so I can marry you. Yes. But I'm sure he'll refuse. I want you for my wife. And I want the world to know it. If Wayne refuses to give you a divorce... Wayne? Oh, it's a tiller again. A tiller? That big fellow there, the one bigger than the rest. Oh, good heavens, he is great. He's killing that other rat. Attila! Stop! Here! There. That'll calm him down. What is that stuff you threw into the cage? Blood feed. Blood feed? Oh, oh, kind of rough animal feed mixed with blood. Oh. The rats love it. I use it as a reward. When a rat learns to do something, perform some little task or trick, I reward him with a pan of food. Are they as intelligent as you do? No, I'm not sure intelligence is the word. Cunning. Yeah, I see. Resourceful. Cunning and resourceful. At this point in my experiments, I'm inclined to think that a rat can figure out a way to do anything. Well, with good reason, of course. If there's something to be gained by it. I'm not sure I understand. Well, for example, you, you see that billiard ball in the cage? Yes. Attila has learned... And so some of the others, but he's the smartest. He's learned to push that ball up that trough and then to maneuver it into that hole at the top. When it goes through the hole, it drops to the bottom of the tube and triggers the opening of that trapdoor. 
And what do you suppose is behind that trap door? Don't tell me. They're thieves. You learn fast, too. <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can teach you something you'll enjoy learning. Oh, Gray. Gray, darling. You're a wonderful teacher. I'm sorry to interfere with Wayne. your love making. You look surprised, my dear. I... I was coming to the hospital to pick you up. You knew that. Wayne, let me make one thing clear. Oh, don't bother, Gray. What's been going on between you and my wife is very clear. Wayne... You think... You really think you've managed to cover up your little game of illicit love? That is nothing illicit. Oh, isn't there? You steal my wife just as you stole the Schuyler Award for research. Well, the me. award? What are you talking about? Oh, you don't know? Well, I suppose that's scarcely surprising. Oh, now, look, Wayne. And get your hands off. Oh, oh. Wayne. My back. That's okay. Oh. Just a sudden change, thanks to you, Gray. I'm sorry if I caused you any pain. I just want to tell you that... Oh, you'll tell me nothing. I'll tell you. You stole my wife. You stole the award. But there's something you're not going to steal because I've got the inside track. The directorship of this institute. Wayne, I have no interest in becoming director of this institute. Good. Because you won't get it. I will. I'm going to our apartment, Doris. I'll expect you there in five minutes. Five minutes. Or else. What does he mean, or else? Nothing. He's just upset. He meant something. I want to know what. That bruise on your cheek a few weeks ago, you didn't get it from a fall. No. Well, that's dirty. Great, please. You're going to leave me. Divorce or no divorce. We'll see, darling. We'll see. We can't go on like this. We? I'm not going on with anything. I'm entirely happy with things as they are. Or will be once I get rid of Dr. Grayson Carter. Get rid of him? <laughs> oh, I don't mean to kill him. Morton has promised me I'll take his place as director once he retires. That'll be soon. As director of the Institute, my first action will be to fire Grayson Carter. You can't do that. Oh, I'll do more than that. I'll not only bounce him, but I'll so dirty his reputation, it'll end his career. How could you possibly dirty Gray's reputation? Well, that's very simple, by spreading the word that he's a wife stealer. But, but he turned a loving wife, my loving wife, into a cheap, lying... <laughs> Don't you ever do that again, Doris, or you'll regret that. A lot worse than you did the last time. You lay a hand on me. I'll lay more than a hand on you, and you'd better keep that in mind. Now, there will be no divorce. You don't love me? I couldn't care less. But you're not going to love anyone else either, and that means beginning now you're to stop seeing Grayson Carter. I will not stop seeing Gray. Oh, I think you will. For his sake, if not yours. I've told you what I intend to do to him once I become director. But I could do even more than that. I don't see how you could do that. I don't intend to tell you. But there is one way you can find out. Just keep seeing him. Just keep letting him take you in his arms, fondling you, kissing you. I could kill you and come along with you. I could... You filthy little frog. Dr. Cheney here. Miss Morton, will you? Oh, yes, Chris. I heard you were coming home from the hospital today, and I'm anxious to talk to you. Would it be convenient to come right over to my office? Oh, it certainly would. I'll be there in five minutes. See you then. Well, it's come quicker than I thought. Morton wants to see me in his office, and right now. <laughs> Unless I miss my guess, the next time you see me, I'll be the director of Merriweather Institute. And your love will be on his way down the drain. Tom, 
Come. Oh, good to see you, Wayne. Come in, come in. Thank you, Chris. Sit down, sit down. How are you feeling? Oh, couldn't be better. Back okay? Oh, yes. A few days in traction always does the trick. Mm, not always. There have been times when it took two, sometimes three weeks. No, no, never that long. Well, now, what I wanted to see you about. I think I know. If anyone deserves promotion, you do. And we have talked about your becoming director. As I made clear to you, Chris, I'm your man. Yes, you are. Or to put it more accurately, you were. Were? I'm as sorry as I can be, but the board turned you down. Well, how could they? Well, you say you recommended I, I was your first choice. That's true. Well, nobody carries more weight than you. The board does, I'm afraid. I'm also afraid that your record was against you. My... My back problem? Yes. Well, what the hell has my back problem got to do with my ability as director? Not your ability, but your... Well, your disability, you might say. To kick me aside just because I've got a trick back? There was another reason. Oh, what other reason? Well, they felt, and really, Wayne, I've got to go along with this... They felt it would be useful to the Institute, you know, helpful in a political and social way, fundraising and all that, to have a man in the director's chair with as much prestige as possible. Prestige? I've got any number of doctorates, books I've written, discoveries. True, I... true, very true. But you don't have the Schuyler Award for research. Mason Carter does. What is it, Wayne? Wayne, you've gone as white as a seat. Uh, are you ill? Grayson Carter. They chose Grayson Carter? Yes. And you... You agreed? It wouldn't have served any purpose to disagree. But you agreed. After assuring me that I'd replace you, after promising me the job... Oh, now, I... Don't remember promise. You did, you did. Right here in this office, you promised me. Wayne, my dear fellow. You'll please. regret this. I promise you, you'll regret it. And I'll keep my promise. You wait and see. You Wayne. wait and see. Wayne. Morton. Oh, yes, Gray. Man, I'd like to offer something tonight. Oh, no, gracious man, it's only nine o'clock. But I have been lying here in my bedroom with the lights off. I've got a splitting headache. Ah, rough day? Oh, I broke the news to Wayne this afternoon. He took it badly. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, he'll get over it. What can I do for you, Gray? Well, I was wondering if you'd listen to that last report of mine on Rathus Leviticus. No, but I was just about to, actually. I got the tape recorder right here on my bedside table and was just about to turn it off. Oh, fine. I'm anxious to get your reaction. Could you call me when you finish? Of course. Uh, how long is the tape? Uh, 20 minutes, thereabouts. I'll call you back, Gray. Report to Dr. Christopher Morton from Dr. Grayson Carter on experiment number 17 for righteous Leviticus. Chris, I hear that my entire theory is based on my conviction that the rats are the rats. What is in the world of that? Hmm. Something in the room. Uh, did it turn on the light? The most intelligent. Good boy. It's a rat. Figures I've ever... No! 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 Even as Dr. Christopher Morton listens to Dr. Grayson Carter's report on his experiment with rats, Attila, the largest and most cunning of all, flings himself at Morton's throat. Trouble lies ahead, and stark terror. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. You 
suppose it was Dr. Wayne Cheney who put Attila the Rat in Dr. Morton's bedroom? Almost bet on it myself. He certainly had the motive. His insane jealousy of Dr. Grayson Carter, plus Carter being appointed director of the Merriweather Institute instead of himself. But how could he have transported the rat to Dr. Morton's bedroom? Seems to be a question that bothers Lieutenant Enright of the police, too. Sit down, gentlemen. And uh, thank you for coming here to headquarters. I'd have come to the Institute, but uh, frankly, I'm up to my ears in emergency police work. I'm happy to cooperate, Lieutenant. Of course. I asked both of you here because the two of you were closer to Dr. Morton than anyone else. But I especially asked you, Dr. Carter, because, well, it was one of your rats that killed Dr. Morton. A tragedy I don't expect to get over, Lieutenant. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, according to a report here made out by Sergeant James of Homicide, when he and his squad arrived at the Institute last night, uh, you had apparently uh, captured the rat and returned it to its cage. Is that so? Yes. Um, tell me about that. Well, there isn't much to tell. Wayne, Dr. Cheney heard Dr. Morton's screams. And... Now, hold it a second. How did you hear the screams, Dr. Cheney? Uh, were you in Dr. Morton's house? Uh, no, I happened to be passing it on my way to the Institute Library. I want to tell you, or, or maybe you know, Morton lived alone except for a housekeeper, and she was out for the evening. Mm-hmm. I found that out later, of course. Well, anyhow, I was passing the house, heard the screams... Rushed in and up to his bedroom. Uh, uh, Go on, please. And it's all so horrible. The rat, that monster of a rat, was on him, tearing at his throat. I can't go on, I'm sorry. What did you do? Well, the only thing I could do was phone me. I rushed over, of course, and... Well, captured it to that. How did you manage to do that? I've been working with these rats for months now, studying their behavioral patterns, their emotional reactions and so on. My experiments have included rewards for certain actions I've taught them to perform. Actions? You mean tricks? Well, yes, you could call them tricks, I guess, but they're really experiments in Rodentia IQ, the intelligence quotient the rat. Pretty smart, I understand, rats. I'm discovering they're even smarter than I thought. Have you any idea how this, um... This Attila got into Dr. Morton's bedroom? Well, do you? Yes. He was put there. He couldn't have gotten there any other way. Mind explaining? My laboratory is in the Institute building, and the building is across the square from Dr. Morton's house. Someone must have opened the big rat cage, lured Attila into a portable cage carried him to Dr. Morton's house and released him in Morton's bedroom. For the purpose of killing Dr. Morton? Yes. Have you any idea as to who wanted to kill Dr. Morton? Well, yes, I do. Who? I can't tell you that. It's only a suspicion I have, and he suspects me. Oh, you need not so surprised. Morton promised me the directorship of the Institute and broke his promise by giving it to you. So who'd have a better motive than me, hmm? The whole Institute knows you seduced my wife, stole her affection. Now, wait. We're making love to her. Why don't you hold it, hold it, both of you. I'm sorry. If I'd known things were like this between you, I'd have interviewed you separately. You've told me all you can at this point. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, oh, and uh, Dr. Carter? Yes. I'd take special security measures with those rats of yours from now on. Dr. Carter. Oh, hello, Mr. Berkowitz. Okay. Aaron, then. Guess I'm not used to calling board chairman by their first names. Yes? Well, I... I hate to wash up the experiment when it's only a few weeks short of completion. Well, I, yes, I know it's been a month since Dr. Morton's death, but... Oh, you know, I have spent as much time as possible doing my job as director. Come in, Doris. Aaron, I couldn't agree more. 
Well, look, let me think about it, will you? I'll get back to you later today, right? Dar, sweetheart. Gray, dear. That was Aaron Berkowitz, chairman of the board of trustees. <laughs> The board feels I'm not giving enough time to my duties as director. You're knocking yourself out. And you look tired and worried. Worried? No. Yes, you are. I can tell. What is it? Well, to be honest, there's something going on here in the lab. It puzzles me. I, I don't understand it. What? I think someone's getting in here at night and... Tampering with the rats. Tampering? Doing something. I, I don't know. The rats seem to be keyed up on edge. Especially Attila. Any rats give me the shakes, but Attila... How could anyone except you get in here? You had that special lock put on the door after Dr. Morton's death. I know, but... Oh, I... Someone could have a key made, I suppose. But why? Who would want to come in here? Oh, secretly, I mean. For what reason? Wayne. Gray. I know you think he killed Dr. Morton. I am sure he did, Dar. Trouble is, I can't prove it. I can't prove he's the one who's prowling around in here when I'm gone either. But I'm pretty sure it is him. Oh, Gray, why don't you give up this whole thing? This whole experiment, these rats... Suppose they got out of that cage while you were here. A hundred and fifty... Oh, hey, darling, cool it. A hundred and fifty rats aren't getting out of any cage. Not while I'm here. One of them did. A did. He did not get out. He was taken out. Look here, let me show you why it's impossible. Great, please. I, I want to... you to stop worrying. Now, see this boat? Yes. Well, it's on the outside of the cage. The only way to open this door is for someone to slide the bolt back, like so. Well, but couldn't a rat... You say they're so clever. I... <laughs> a rat reach through the bars and slide the bolt. Well, I... I guess so. Well? But he'd... He'd have to be taught to do it, just the way I've taught him to do other things. Honey, I am not teaching a rat how to slide the bolt back. Well... I'll be glad when this whole experiment is over and done with and you're safe behind your desk in the director's office. Oh, stop worrying, Doris. About the rats, anyway. We've got other things to worry about. Do you ask Wayne for a divorce again? Yes. He just laughed at me. I guess I'm just going to have this out with him. But there's nothing you can do. He is my husband. He's got to give you a divorce. He won't. No, he won't. Is he at home now? Yes, at least he was when I left. Why? Come on. We'll see him together. Wait, wait a minute. I am Ray. not I... waiting another second. This thing has dragged on long enough. Drop dead, Gray. Oh, Wayne, be reasonable. Reasonable? You ask me to be reasonable? Wayne, I don't love you anymore. I love Gray, so what's the use There's of our no being... no use. No use at all. I'd be happy to be rid of you. Happy to give you a divorce, except that would make you happy. If there's one thing in this world I'll do everything to prevent, it's your happiness. What kind of a man are you? I detest you. I say it calmly because I have to. My doctor has made it very clear to me that extreme emotion, especially anger, can bring on another back seizure. And what about hate? Oh, I find hating you decidedly comforting, my dear. It gives me greater pleasure than you'll ever know. In fact, I hate you so much. Oh, yes, why not? I might even give you a divorce. Oh, don't play games. I'm not playing games. I might just give Doris her freedom. All right. Why? Why? Because I know what her life with you will be like. I know you for what you are, Gray. A self-centered character who has only one interest in life, himself. And once she married you, once you got what you wanted, she'd find out what you're really like. No better than those rats of yours. I ignore your insults for what they are to me. Nothing. Are you serious about giving Doris her freedom? I'll think about it. For now, if you don't mind, I'll ask you to leave. I'll see you to the door. 
Gray, can he possibly mean it? I don't trust him. One way of making us miserable would be to raise our hopes and then dash them to the ground. Don't get your hopes too high. Goodbye, dear. How can you bear to leave him out of your sight? Wayne, did you mean it? Will you give me a divorce? I said I'd think about it, didn't I? But did you mean it? Did I mean it? Why, yes, I meant it. It is possible that were I to give you your freedom to marry him, you'd come to loathe each other in very little time. I'd take my chances. Of course, because you're in love. So madly in love. But now another thought strikes me. And it's a thought I don't relish at all. What thought? <laughs> Wayne, what thought? <laughs> The thought that you might be right and I wrong. But if you marry Gray, you, you might spend the rest of your life deliriously happy. <laughs> I couldn't have that. Could I? Wayne? Are you all right? Wayne? I'm thinking... You asked me if I would think it over, and that's what I'm doing, thinking it over. Oh. I'm not only thinking it over. I've come to a decision. And what is your decision? No. Uh, what do you want? Your death. My death. Wayne, what are you saying? You didn't see Dr. Morton when that rat Attila was finished with him. Oh, no. You didn't see the throat. Oh, stop it. And all done by one rat. Oh. Think what two rats could do. Or ten. Oh. Or a hundred and fifty. What are you saying? Oh. You are the one. You've been in Gray's lab at night. Yes. Yes, of course. What were you doing there? Well, what do you do with rats? If the celebrated behavioral scientist, Dr. Grayson Carter, is to be taken seriously, you teach them tricks. I have been teaching them tricks. A uh, correction. I have been teaching one of them a trick. What? kind of trick. Oh, I hate to admit this, but Gray is absolutely right. Rats are clever. One of them is, anyhow. What? The one I lured into a portable cage with the special feed and transported to the bedroom of our late Dr. Morton. You... Well, who else? You know it. Gray knows it. I'm quite sure that even Lieutenant Enright knows it. But none of you can prove it. Oh. What, what are you going to do? Kill you. What? Or rather, they are. They? <laughs> the rats. Clearly, the warped and twisted brain of Dr. Wayne Cheney has devised a horrible death for his estranged wife, Doris. In a few moments, we'll learn how he plans to use those rats. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. You're still with me? Good. Well, now, I'd say that Dr. Wayne Cheney has come unhinged, wouldn't you? No man in his right mind would plan to murder his wife by using rats. Excuse me, one rat, Attila. Now, just how he intends to use Attila, I don't know. You? Well, let's find out together. Midnight, Doris. The time has come. More properly, your time has come. Wayne, please... Come to your senses. Move. No. 
I have ways of making you, you know that. All too well. You can twist my arm, bend my fingers, use any of those sadistic grips you have. I will... Oh. Oh. Change your mind, my darling? Oh! Does it? Oh! Oh, please! Yes, please, stop! That's better. There's a coil of rope in the closet. Get it. Yes. Very good. Bring it along. I warn you, if you try anything on your way to the laboratory, I'll make you wish for death. Surprised I have a key to this new lock? Well, I won't keep it a secret from you, Doris. Husbands and wives should have no secrets from each other. Uh Uh-oh, I forgot. You don't go along with that. You believe in keeping secrets from your husband. Secrets of illicit love. Wayne, you're wrong. You're so wrong. You deny the two of you were meeting secretly? Not secretly. Making love secretly? No. Did you enjoy being crushed in his arms? Uh, Stop it. It was nothing like that. You've let your imagination invent things that never happened. You... Wait, wait, wait. What are you doing? Oh, just tying you up. No. Why do you think you brought the rope? Wait. What are you going to do? I am going to do nothing. The rats will do it all in a hostel. I want to be sure your wrists are securely tied behind your back. Oh, I almost forgot. I promised to tell you how I got a key to the lock. I don't care how you managed to. Oh, but you should. Without a key, I never could have done the remarkable thing. Yes, the very remarkable thing I've done. <clears throat> All right, now to tie your feet together at the ankles. No. See, all I did was simple. All I did was call in a locksmith the day Gray went to a board of trustees meeting. I merely said I'd lost a key and needed another. Simple as that. Oh, sorry, but I must bind you tightly. There we go. That should hold you. Wait. Now, we'll just place you on the floor. Oh, no, no, please. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. If the floor is cold. Oh. But you won't be chilly long. Not very long, anyhow. Wait. Listen to me. I beg you, please. What the hell is going on in here? Gray! Help me, Gray! Doris, what are you doing here at this hour? Checking the lab at odd hours to catch whoever's been prowling around here. Hey, what are we? Are you sorry? Are you? Are you? <laughs> are you trying to get up, Gray, and I'll bring you with this chair? Are you? You. You. I hope not. You killed him. I don't want to be done out of the pleasure. No, no, no. He's not dead. He's breathing. (laughs) Got to get him tied up, too, before he comes around. You're going to kill us both. Oh, hardly an opportunity to be missed, my darling. Maybe there is some justice. Oh. There, now. (laughs) His wrists tied behind his back. Now for his ankles. Oh. I better hurry. He's coming, too. Oh, what a... You... Now you move, and I'll belt you again. What? What? There we what? go. Wow. Neatly tied up the two of you. Oh. Now isn't this a pretty sight? The lover and the unfaithful wife trapped. Horace, he's out of his mind. He brought me here to kill me. He intends to have the rats killed. Me. You oh. are crazy. <laughs> There's no sense trying to free yourself. You're tied securely, and so is my unfaithful wife. You wish to be parted from me, my dear? You wish to dissolve our union so you could be united with your lover? You shall be united. In death. I'm beginning now. Something I learned from you, and 
Doctor. Your experiments gave me the weapons with which to kill you both. How? You claim that rats are animals of superior intelligence. And to prove it, and you did prove it, you experimented with these monsters in the cage for months, true? Go on. Well, you proved that rats do think. You proved that a rat can be taught, within reason, to figure out a problem for himself. If... It resulted in a reward. I know all that. Go on. Oh? Are you in a hurry to die? I'm sorry. That doesn't fit into my plan. Oh, no. I'm going to make you suffer. You're going to be torn apart by rats. Oh, those rats. All of them. Gray. Oh, Gray. Wayne, you seem to have forgotten something, Wayne. Oh, have I? Let those rats... Out of the cage, and they'll attack you, too. <laughs> now, why didn't I think of that? Wouldn't I have said to myself, Wayne, the moment you slip the bolt on that door and the rats come pouring out, they'll attack you, too. <laughs> but I did think of it. <laughs> and would you believe it? I solved the problem. No, 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 no. Give credit where credit is due. You solved it, Ray. You proved what remarkable things a rat can do if spurred to do them for a reward. Clever. Very clever. Rats. Especially your friends. And mine. A chiller. You, 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 you've been breaking into the lab secretly and... You conduct an experiment of my own. And following your methods, Gray, I succeeded in teaching a chiller to perform a little trick. On command. What little trick? I taught him to slide back the bolt and open the door of the cage. Oh, great. Easy, darling. Oh. You're not making sense, Wayne. You don't believe Attila can do it? Yeah, he's smart enough to be taught to do it, but you couldn't have taught him because... Once he'd learned he could open the cage any time he wanted to... Ah, no, 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 no. You're forgetting your own theory. A rat performs only for a reward. Always there must be that reward. A chiller will slide the boat back only after it has been smeared with feed. And I give him the command. Oh, oh. Shall I demonstrate? Wait, don't do this. Listen, let us go. I promise you. Wait, I but promise you. Promise what? Anything. Anything you want. Anything. Wait. I want your death. Uh, and his. Uh, and I want it to be so terrifying that you'll die a thousand deaths before the final one. Uh, a blood feed. Uh, Wayne, let, let Doris go. Kill me, but let her go. Uh, First, I smear this feed on the bolt of the door. Uh, what do you see? You see, Gray? Your friend Attila knows what it's all about. You see how he runs back and forth, pawing at the door? But he won't touch that bolt. Oh, no, not till I give the command. Ray, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, may I draw your attention to that large sack of feed there on the shelf? You know what I'm going to do with that? Do you? I'm going to get that one and pour the feed it contains. Over you. Over both of you. That's heavy. You might may be interested to know that once I give the command to open the bolt, it takes Attila about five minutes to get it open, and then, and that, they go. My back. My back. That's one of his seizures. He's frog on the food. Through the sack. My feet is all over him. I can't move. I'm paralyzed. I can't move. Oh, thank the Lord. He didn't give us another command. He did. The, the food did. What? I didn't give any command. Why is it? 
to a point at the boat where he's trying to slide it back. No, I didn't give a command. I couldn't have. But what was the command, Wayne? What pointed something at Triple and open the boat? You fool! You fool! You said it! You I'll said it! When they give the command to open the boat, you said it'll take it till about five minutes to get it open. Oh, Lord. Oh, oh. I just said I did. I did. Yes. Help me. Oh, help me. Help me. How oh, can we? We can't even help ourselves. Oh, can you, can you just roll over on your side? On my side? I'll try to learn you over it with oh, my back. Maybe. Oh. Just maybe oh. I can move my fingers enough to open them. Not oh. your wrist. Yes. Can you do it? No, that's why we've got to. The rabbi. The rabbi. Listen to them. Listen to them. Great. They know what's happening. They'll come for me. For me. I'm covered with pity. They'll tear me to bits. Doris. Don't move. Keep your hands still. What? I'm not going to ask that. Not me sliding that ball. And the rat fell. All at the front of the gate near the door. They can't wait to get out. To get out. Another miss. Another miss. Another miss. Help me. Help me. Doris, try to move your hands. Can you? Can you? No. I hope you do it. Oh, you. It's too late. It's too late. The cage is over. And that's it, Lieutenant. That's about all there is to tell. I'm amazed you got out at all. The rats, every one of them went for a feed Wayne was covered with. And, of course, Wayne... If only we could have done something to save him. What could you have done? If you'd wasted any time once you got untied, you'd never made it out of there alive. That is for sure. Well, it's over now. I'm not a vengeful man, but I must say your husband got what he deserved. He used a rat to murder Dr. Morton and was murdered himself in the same way. Oh, uh, one thing, Dr. Carter. Yes? I hope you're finished with your experiments. I am. No time for experiments now. I'm going to be much too busy as director of the Institute and... And what? And as your husband, sweetheart. And surely they deserved happiness, those two. The fates had thrown them a pretty horrible and terrifying curve. The kind few of us are ever called on to face. At least I hope we aren't. But you never know, do you? I'll be back shortly. You'll be glad to know that Doris and Gray are happily married now, and the parents of twins. Doris is kept very busy being a mother, and Gray has his hands full as director of the Institute. He keeps hoping he'll find time one of these days to continue with some research. But rest assured, it won't be with rats. Our cast included Michael Wager, Joan Loring, Ralph Bell, and Bob Caliban. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.